Hello and welcome back. We'll be uh, listening about introduction to DLL and API in this session. Uh, as if like uh, we'll be first understanding what is dynamic linked libraries, then how does application program interface is connected with DLLs to uh, work with the interaction. So as we know that all Windows applications at their most basic level, uh, even one which is written using Visual Basic also interact with the computer environment. As uh, the application gets in its interaction with the environment of the computers, it is going to call uh, uh, some of the functions which are written in a library called as DLL. So DLLs or a library of uh, functions or subroutines which are usually written in C or C++ or sometimes it may be written using Pascal also. Uh, so this particular subroutine is uh, linked to linked and it is used during the runtime. So we have certain functions. Let us take an example like as you people have uh, learned C or C++ when you are writing as include stdio.h in C uh, programming. So which is uh, which becomes a preprocessor directive for uh, two of the functions called as uh, scanf and the printf where scanf works as an in input statement and printf works as an output statement. So these function subroutines are being written and kept in uh, stdio.h and that is included. As a similar way, whenever a particular application is trying to interact with the hardware resources or it is trying to interact with the, any other, say, particular program, okay, so it uses a, a subroutine called as DLL, okay, so which is stored in terms of a DLL and these are called as DLL files which are kept in the library. And that is called as dynamic linked library. So usually when we uh, speak about uh, DLL, it usually performs a specific function. DLL spe uh, performs a specific function by using DLL routines with Visual Basic. So you'll be able to extend your application capabilities. Like you develop a particular application and that uh, application capabilities can be extended by making use of many hundreds of function which are stored uh, say in DLL with the help of a Windows application program interface. These functions are usually uh, used by virtually, by virtually every application uh, to perform functions like uh, displaying windows, uh, maybe a file manipulation, uh, maybe uh, printer control, maybe menus, uh, sub menus, dialog boxes, multimedia, like as we take example right now when I'm speaking in front of a microphone, my microphone is connected to the application, right? So there should be some particular subroutine which is making the uh, recorded voice to be played into the application, which contacts, I mean, which uh, develops and uh, what we call it as interaction, which develops and uh, say continuity between the application and the hardware resource. So there are plenty of such examples that we can take. So normally like when uh, you uh, take a hardware like barcode reader and you take details of the barcode reader as an input to the application. Say maybe use used at a departmental store. So maybe uh, you find something one like in a weighing machine. When you uh, put something on the weighing machine, uh, the weighing machine calculates weight of that particular material and data that is taken as a weight of a material is being shifted to the computer. So how does it happen? All this happens with the help of uh, functions which are written in DLL, okay? Dynamic, uh, dynamic linked library functions, what we call them as. So uh, other main aspect or uh, other main advantage of using DLL is that you can uh, use available routines. All the available routines which are uh, stored in the DLLs uh, can be used without having to duplicate the code in basic. So you need not duplicate the code. Whatever the code is available there, you can just help it out. I mean, take, take it out from the Windows library or from the DLL library. So if you just go to uh, the 
what we call it as the drive system 32 which is available in the track of uh, windows folder in c drive so when we go to c drive windows system 32 we'll find a lot of dll files there so these dll files help us to interact with the outside environment whatever may be the environment either it may be an application or it may be a hardware it may be a software resource it may be a say, connectivity source or anything else so it all happens with the help of a dll so in many cases uh, there isn't even a way to do a function in basic calling dll routine is the only way to accomplish this task so uh, you have most of the dlls are written and it is kept as a part in the windows environment so all the all the thing what we need to do is we need to just call them inside our vp program and we need to accomplish the task as required in the program that's important aspect of uh, dll so using the corresponding dll rental, uh, dll uh, routine may be faster so it, it becomes very faster like we use api weaver or api text weaver which we'll be discussing in the uh, probably the next part so uh, where we will use with the help of a api weaver we are going to say uh, extend these files which will be called into our program maybe uh, it will work more faster more efficient on dll calls and the api uh, so it, it is going to run the thousands of pages uh, pages which are already available so and we will try to oh, understand this aspect of how dll uh, files are called with the help of a application program interface now application program interface is a software which will help you to interact with the dll files to the application so uh, we have application program which is being developed in a, a vb and this vb program is going to use some dll subroutine it is going to use some dll subroutine which is present in the windows environment and api is that particular intermediator or intermediate uh, say program which helps uh, the main program or the main application to link to the dll so that is how the process happens so uh, the dll uh, file is stored in the windows environment and we will run an api file so api will say go to uh, say dll file take that subroutine call that subroutine and works with the uh, process so that's about uh, dll let us speak some more things about dll uh, using a dll procedure from visual basic uh, say it's not much different from calling a general basic function or a procedure so how do we normally call a procedure which we have seen in the earlier videos like class module we have called the function using a command button so a, a sub function which is available in the class module is being called so we have to just make sure that you pass it correct with number of correct number of arguments and the type of the arguments this should be kept in the mind whenever you are calling a dll function the number and type of the arguments of the dll functions should be correctly passed so for example if you are uh, say uh, calling a function a dll function okay so you have to first declare the function as type with the help of a api weaver text so we will be looking at that particular example so how does uh, api weaver helps us to work with the dll files which are already present in the uh, libraries so another aspect is you should uh, keep in mind when calling the dll procedures or the functions the argument list should be correct and both regarding the number of number and type of the argument should be correct so if else if they are not right that we are going to see bad things happening there okay so once again let us try to summarize what we have understood with the help of, uh, with dll okay so 
uh, as I said, all Windows applications at their most basic level, we use a DLL. So we'll interact with the computer environment. All, all Windows applications, maybe it is Word, maybe it is Excel, uh, maybe it is PowerPoint, or maybe it is any programming language, maybe an interpreter, it may be a software, it may be a compiler. So it has to interpret with, or it has to interact with the environment of Windows because we are working under Windows operating system. So it has to work. I mean, if we are working with some other operating system, it has to interact with those operating system DLL files. So one thing which we should make very clear is, so this uh, interaction between an application program and the Windows environment itself happens with the help of a DLL files. So dynamic linked library or such uh, say collection of subroutines which will allow us to interact with different subroutines. I mean, so as I said, each, each usual, uh, DLL usually performs a specific function. So every DLL that is written and kept in a library has got a separate function. So by using DLL routines with Visual Basic, we will be able to extend our application capabilities by making use of hundreds of externally stored subroutines. There are plenty of subroutines which have been kept in the Windows environment. Those subroutines we are just dragging inside our application and we are making use of it in DLL. So that's what uh, uh, the most uh, important thing that we do in DLL is. And then the uh, advantage is uh, the simple thing. We are not writing the entire code. We are just copying down and linking with the DLL, uh, which is present uh, with the help of API text viewer. We, were, we are linking it to the uh, Windows environment. And it obviously, uh, whenever uh, there is a compilation process or interpretation happens, it obviously call that subroutine and executes the procedure within the subroutine. So that's about DLL, okay? We have summarized, now we are trying to understand uh, how does we use API uh, in terms of linking DLL files to our particular application. So in the next video, I'll be talking about how uh, API is uh, in the procedure, uh, with the procedure, how do we connect an API to the existing application program uh, for using dynamic linked libraries. Thank you, friends.